baba wathi sezulwini sibonga malapha sibonga izibusiso zakho sibonga wena sibonga ukuthi wena ukwazile ukuzalana wazosikhomba ukuthi impilo kufanele sihambe sihambe ngayiphi indlela sibonga ukuthi uzikhomba uthando uthando lwakho uthando lwakho ngaphele sibonga yonke into senzele yona sibonga nokuthi uzilelana wazosifela wazofela izono zethu baba sicela ukuthi usixolele usixolele ukuthi asikwazanga ukuthi sibambe lezifundo zakho lezifundo zakho sifundise zona kodwa nje ngoba kwamanje sizongena kulelo kulelo konzo lo baba sicela ukuthi ube nathi ube nalabo bangakwazi ukuthi bazwe izwi lakho sicela ngikulunkulu ukuthi ubambe usizi ukuthi sikwazi ukubamba ukubambelela kulelo lizwe izwi lakho baba sicela ukuthi ube nalabo abanganali abangasenali senali ithemba laba abangasenali ukholo sicela ukuthi ube nabo ukuze nabo bakwazi uba nethemba bakwazi ubambelela kulelo themba sicela baba ukuthi usize nathi ukuthi sikwazi ukukhulumisana nawo sikwazi ubabambisi uba sikwazi ukuthi sithathele izandla zawo babambelele kulelo themba esibambelele kuyo baba sicela ukuthi usize nalabo abadingo thanda usize ukuthi nathi sikwazi ubakhomba lothando lwakho lothando lwakho ongaphele baba sicela ube nengane zethu njengoba zoqala isikolo zoqala ukuya ubuyele esikolweni sicela baba ukuthi ube nawo babusise phindu bavimbe uvimbe nekhorona ukuthi ingaba ingase affect ing affect lezi zingane baba unezigulwane kunalaba abasezibhedlela kunalaba abadingo sizo lwakho sicela usize thini ukuze sikwazi ukuba sizi sicela ukuthi usize thina sikwazi u sikwazi kunikeza laba abanye abadinga ukudla njengoba besibhizi sibhizi sibhakisha lokudla sicela ukuthi lokudla kusize laba abadinga ukudla nakhona sikwazi nokuba nikeza lokudla ukuya kuwe ukudla ongaphele izwi lakho siyakubonga inkosi Jesu sibonga ngegama la Jesu Kristo amen our reading today comes from acts 1 verses 1 to 11 and i'm reading from the niv version in my former book theophilus I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen after his suffering he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God 
On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Thanks be to God for his word today. Thank you, Tia, for that wonderful reading. I know we're going to use a couple of different people and languages today, but I'm just really looking forward to spending this time exploring what Ascension Day means to each one of us. So, it's been 40 days since Easter Sunday. Wow, can we even believe that, eh? Huh? And yet, those last 40 days have been completely different completely different to any other that I can remember. We've celebrated Easter inside our homes without our friends and our family, without the sunrise service, without going to church in the morning. We've not worshipped together for a very long time. And when we think about 40 days, it hasn't been that long, but it has been a very long time in the history of this country. We haven't been together, friends. We haven't shared communion. We haven't been able to worship. We haven't greeted each other and hugged each other and laughed at each other's jokes. We also haven't heard each other's voices sing as we worship our Lord together and as we pray together. It's been weird. It's been different. And church, for me and for many of us, just being at church, everything has changed. I think also that in the 40 days after Jesus rose, for his disciples and his followers, everything changed for them too. They had started off as ordinary men and women who needed, who heeded the call to follow Jesus and to be his disciples. They would faithfully followed and learned from Jesus, traveling with him, hearing his preaching and his teaching, witnessing miracles almost daily sometimes, and understanding what it really means to follow Christ and to worship God our Heavenly Father. They had also lost their leader. They had watched him being crucified and dying on the cross at Calvary, knowing all along that he was without sin. I think that on that day they sensed that history would change forever. By the time Ascension Day came, they had mourned and cried, devastated that Jesus was gone. Then they had witnessed him go again and come and appear after these three days when he had left them, appearing just as he said he would. He spoke to them again, he ate with them again, a very churchy thing to do, and he spent time with those that he loved in those next 40 days after Easter Sunday. And then on Ascension Day, just 40 days after they'd finally got him back, Jesus ascended up into heaven to be seated at the right hand of God. They were amazed. They were sad. They were excited all at once in one moment. Like the disciples of those days, each of us today, 40 days after we celebrated Easter, need to figure out what this all means to us. This is not just a nice feel-good story. This is an account of what it means to be a Christ follower. So let's look at where this story speaks to us the most, right here and now. 
Are you today in a space where you're deciding whether to follow Christ and whether that following Christ will make the difference that you need in your life? Are you still deciding whether to give up on those worldly habits and practices that take up your headspace? Those things that fill your days that might not be of God. Like the early disciples, we are called to follow Jesus and to be all in with this journey. It's not just a Sunday thing and we've come to realize in the last while that church is not just a Sunday thing. We have transformed our sanctuary from a place of worship and praise and deep spiritual learning to a place of busyness and packing of food to feed the hungry. And not just a few, we have fed hundreds of thousands through our church sanctuary. And every time we go there, it's just a little bit different. We may be not sitting with our friends, but I know that what we are doing right now at the church, food pack for the people that need it, is just as much church as sitting in the pews and listening to a sermon is. So when we decide to follow Jesus, it's not just a Sunday thing, it's an all-in thing. If this is where you find yourself today, friends, then please reach out to chat to one of us at the church. Elvis, Jim, myself and many of the leaders would love to walk alongside you as this journey commences in your life. If you are at this place right now deciding whether being a disciple is what you need to do, I will urge you to pray earnestly, pray honestly, admit what's holding you back, speak to your Heavenly Father, He wants to hear from you. And then take that first step, friends. Maybe, like the disciples a little later on in their journey who were with Jesus for the preaching and the teaching, maybe you really are a Christ follower. My challenge to you is, are you listening every day? Are you learning more and more about the Savior? Are you experiencing the pure joy of living life alongside Jesus Christ? Are you spending your time in prayer and worship every day? Are you feeling closer to Christ than you ever have been? I really hope that this is where many of us will be able to find ourselves, if not today, then soon enough. Friends, if you are feeling close to Christ right now, then this is what we need to do. This is how we can feel and be when we follow our Savior. But then as the disciples carried on with their journey, we realized that they lost Jesus. Everything had been going great. They were called. They answered the call. They felt close to Jesus. They were with him every day. They heard him preaching and teaching. And yet there came a time when there was just this absolute sense of loss. Are you feeling like you have lost someone or something or some environment or some relationship that you're not sure is ever going to come back? For those first three days after Jesus was crucified, the disciples experienced acute loss. Their world had been turned upside down. Their daily life had changed. They were used to walking alongside Jesus and finding out what he had to say and listening and hanging on his every word. And now he was gone. I would think that the relationships within the group of disciples also changed. They were scared. They didn't know what was going on. They knew that nothing would ever be the same again. Is this where you find yourself today, friends? This lockdown and self-imposed isolation has taken away from each one of us. Some of us are more lonely than we've ever been. We've missed birthdays and anniversaries of loved ones. We haven't been able to celebrate births or mourn at funerals in the way that we've been accustomed to. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated right now. If that is where you are, that's fine. That is simply where you are. 
Maybe we look back to days gone by when all was going well, like the disciples who had spent those three intense years of ministry alongside Jesus. The disciples then spent three days not knowing what was next. For many of us in this country today, we don't know what will happen tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. We're not sure, we're scared, and we're not knowing what's going on. So this is where you're at. It's okay. Please don't judge yourself right now. It's okay to want the whole family around the table together. It's okay to want to sit down and have an hour-long face-to-face chat with a friend that you haven't seen in months now. It's okay. Those disciples spend three days not knowing. And sometimes I think we're sitting in that place too. Friends, it's okay to be in that place. My prayer for each one of us today is that like the disciples, we will begin to emerge from the devastation of change and we'll begin to see Jesus again. We can begin to see Jesus in everyday things. Different everyday things, absolutely. I've never done so much cooking and cleaning and washing and dishes that I have in the last couple of weeks. Different everyday things. But that's the beauty of Jesus. He's still right here with you and with me. At this time, we need to look very carefully for the places and spaces where we can feel safe again. Let's include Jesus as we walk and we talk as we eat and as we spend time, even if it's with the help of electronics, with those that we love. This is what Jesus did for the 40 days after he rose. After his resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days with his friends and those that he loved. Friends, he will continue to be with you and with me right now too. And then as we embrace this day and celebrate Jesus ascending into heaven to sit with his Father, we need to know that God has called us, each one of us, into that relationship with him. He has not left us, just like he didn't stay on that cross. He came down, he rose, and he will always be with us. He is with us in our grief and our mourning and our anxiety and our hardships. He's right here beside us as we do life differently. He's with his Father in heaven right now, interceding for you and for me. Friends, he's loving us right now. So somewhere in this passage, I really hope that you have resonated with where you are today. It might be different from yesterday and it will be different from tomorrow. But for today, be honest with yourself and with God and acknowledge where you're at. As we move forward after Ascension Day, next Sunday we celebrate Pentecost, where God sent His Holy Spirit to dwell with us. Let's give ourselves permission to feel what we're feeling, to be how we're being, to do what we're doing. Let's just be kind to ourselves and know always that Jesus comes and calls you to Himself every single day. I would like just briefly to say thank you to the others on the team that have shared the readings and the prayers in this service. Thank you to Tia, to Lisa, to Elvis. It's not the same as being up front together with the whole congregation, but it's still good to be together in this forum. Thank you so much for these things. Let us pray. Bonga la makama ve kulunya ngu kundi suji. Ugu tiskwazi ukokela ngu. Kumbu le lelo sumu. O hamba. Wasche lugu ti. Zangu shi. Kota o shi ye. Nano. Ongu stutu. Kumtutu. Moyo
ni kama yache Yesu Kristo. Amen.